Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Pretty Little Podcast. I'm Allie, Violet Vixen Commissaro, and I'm here with Jesse. Hi guys, welcome back. So, welcome to the electrifying world of electric animals, where pulsating beats meets untamed energy, creating a sonic safari you won't soon forget. Join us on a wild ride through the jungle of music. Please welcome Nick from Electric Animals. Hey! Hey! I like that introduction. How you doing today? I'm doing good, feeling good. It's a Monday, I believe. (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time to come on with us. Absolutely. (laughs) So, we have to ask, how did the band come together? That is the question. Um, It was about four or five years ago, and we started with five of us, and we whittled it down to two of us. So as you can probably assume, a lot of inner turmoil (laughs) that that got us to this point. But five member five members can be chaotic. Yeah, can only imagine. So now that we're at two, we're kind of like, it's like a fresh start that we just, we just feel good and everything's kind of flowing and moving, moving great. So let's take it all the way back. How did you come up with the name? That's a tough, that's a tough question. Um, I can actually remember I was at the gym, not, not flaunting that, like I'm always at the gym. It was a a random occurrence, but I was at the gym, so I was talking to the original drummer, and we were just shooting names back and forth. And I said, I think it was just like, it was so random. We were just throwing like random words, like something animals, this animals, that animals, electric this, electric that. And then finally I just said electric animals. And he was like, that's perfect. And then I was like, yeah, but let's spell it differently, which... I kind of, to this day, regret that because we put the K in there like, yeah, that's awesome. But then you can never find us whenever you're searching. But you know what? It makes you unique. It does. Okay. And so now nobody has it. So if we, you know, by the grace of the universe, do well, you know, we're not going to get sued immediately because someone else has the name. So we'll take it. You know what? I, I- I've noticed a lot of bands are doing that where they spell it differently or they like add their kind of like signature to the spelling. Yeah. It's kind of, it, <laughs> it seals the deal that you don't have to change it down the road, you know? <clears throat> so how would you describe your overall sound and style? Sound and style. We're kind of like, I mean, I always go to inspirations. Like we're super inspired by like eighties pop. 90s like alt rock and then we always have this like modern kind of like fringe on all our songs so it's it's kind of like just a hodgepodge of all that stuff um yeah what that's have all you been listening to lately who have i been listening to lately yeah. oh i go back and right now i'm super into the beaches i don't know if you guys yeah. know beaches, but um i've heard of them yeah they're just they've been taking up my entire spotify so <laughs> I love that band. Um, Other than that, always and forever, Third Eye Blind is like my just on repeat no matter where I am. So definitely summer music. It is. And and like, mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah, like, all right, all right. Which they're coming to Red Rocks, which uh, have you guys ever been to Red Rocks? No. No, Um, where is that? It's Colorado. Colorado is on my bucket list. Like, like I'm going to. The giant Colorado venue, like Red Rocks, is where you got to go. I've definitely heard of it. I know it's in, like, top venues. (laughs) But I looked at tickets, and they're, like, $600 for, like, the the way up, like, nosebleeds. Yeah, the nosebleeds. Yeah, I was like, no, not going. (laughs) There's certain bands that just always put on a good show. Like, you just know that it's going to be amazing. (laughs) I figured Colorado had a really good music scene because um, 
Denver is the only uh, other city that has the decibel metal and beer. Like um, Philadelphia has a huge music scene and we have the other, um, we have the metal and beer, like the summer one and Denver has the um, winter one, metal and beer festival. So I always figured there has to be like a big music scene out there for them to have the other. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's a lot of EDM, a lot okay. of a lot of folk music. So it's kind of like opposite spe spectrum. It's like, really like, interesting. A lot of EDM, a lot of folk. So it's like, we're kind of like in the middle of The like, middle of it, yeah. Kind of, kind of close to EDM, but you know. But you have a different sound that isn't just so generic that you could place it on like a certain spectrum. Like yeah. you, you're doing, you're paving your own sound. So I get that. What would you, con what would you consider if you had to label it with a genre? With a genre? Um, you know, like indie rock, alt rock, indie pop. Like we always have, we always have the pop in there. Like we always like to say rock because we are like guitar driven band, but mm -hmm. I, I love pop music and I always make sure like pop melodies, pop sensibilities, you know. They're formulated in such a way like pop music. I love pop music. I love all different. I also love that pop has so many subgenres now. It's not just pop. You yeah. have, uh, you have dream pop, you have like, um, you have a uh, hyper pop it's just like pop music just is like i don't know there's so many different directions you can take it in and you can That's really so just cool. do something special and different with it so i i love that you i mean yeah we always, i mean a while back we always kind of like were anti not saying we're pop because we're like no mm -hmm. we don't do pop but like eventually i was like we are pop like we yeah kind of pop. like why well who cares we're poppy like it's catch, whatever, you know? Yeah, I totally, I totally get, that. get that. I think that there, it used to, people used to treat it more like a dirty word, but now I feel like people have really, like there's art pop. There's, you know, like there's so many different avenues you can go with it. And I feel like it's like, um, I don't know. There's, there's so much creative, artistic creativity in the genre at this point that it's not a manufactured, like a back early like early pop music a lot of it was very manufactured and now i don't have that sense to it i feel like it's a very organic. Oh, they, they just take it and twist it and like mm -hmm. make it. whatever you want i mean i see i hear some songs on tiktok and i'm like i know this but it's like a different beat than i'm used to yeah like yeah i get it it's awesome so I know it's probably changed through the years since you went from five to two, but what is your latest like kind of songwriting process? Songwriting process. So with two, Will, he kind of starts the, the train of like instrumentation and all that. Like he'll just have an idea on guitar, on piano, even just like a drum beat with like a simple bass line. And then he'll send it to me. We, we never really write together, which could be, could be weird for some people, but I think it helps us because it allows us to just kind of do what we want in the space. Yeah. You know? Like there's not someone else being like, no, 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 or like any of that kind of distraction. So like he'll send me an idea and I'll just be like, either be like, yeah, I got an idea for that. That's cool. Like I'll send something back and then I'll write lyrics, words, send it back. And then he kind of sends it back with more guitar and then I'll send it back with more like layers of harmonies. And then we kind of just go back and forth, which is actually really, beneficial to our songwriting and it kind of speeds up the process i think a lot um, definitely usually bands it's the opposite they'll no i mean we've done we've done the thing where it's all of us in a room and we like are like all right let's try an idea and it's like the whole time it's just everyone messing around you know giving their ideas yeah like giving their ideas input you'll do something they'll be like no someone will do something else you'll be like no you know and it's like the creativity kind of gets lost in that. And I think we kind of found a way where it's like, do your thing, and then we can say if it's not good or not, like later on, you know? But just like, yeah, you definitely got to have like a deep connection to be able to go about it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been fun, actually. This, this past like year, just writing, it's been just like a freeing experience. Just be like, write whatever you want and 
who cares, you know? So how do personal experiences shape the content of your songs? I mean, I guess it's fully shaped everything I write. Um, relationships, life, traumas, experiences. It's kind of like, it, it's, I've always wrote in a darker sense with my lyrics, just like a, it's always a little on the depressing side, you know, like with how I write. It's always just been a little teetering, like, geez, this guy's. What would you say is your deepest song? Um, on this new EP? Uh, yeah, we can do on the new one since you have quite a few records. <laughs> yeah, uh, the new EP, I would say, like, our song Dreaming Wishing, I kind of went a little, a little deeper. Um, that song. I love that one, by the way. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That song was more just like, it started out as me just kind of like talking about somebody else. And then it mm -hmm. kind of transferred to me like giving advice, but not really having advice. It was me just like, don't, don't go down this path. Mm -hmm. This is song about just like going on the partying path. And then me like, cause I've done that and I'm still like struggling to get out of that. I still struggle to get out of that, like, partying ways and, like, Friday, Saturday, just going out and just, like, going crazy. And it's me just getting kind of older to the point where I'm, like, talking to somebody a bit younger, being like, hey, I'm here and I'm still here and it's hard to get out. And here's a little advice, you know, like, you got to get out. That's so awesome. <laughs> it's kind of like the deeper, the deeper song of mine. Um, but yeah, I always, so I always like I'm on the darker side of things, but I always try to like tinge it with kind of hope. Um, Cause when I listen to music, I don't like everything to be completely depressing. You know, I don't, I don't like to feel like complete well, garbage. Your songs definitely are very storytelling. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, like so you yeah. Can definitely like picture what you're saying and give it your own interpretation, so. Awesome. I'm always a fan of that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, and I honestly, I, I don't really like talking about the songs and what they're about, just because I love when people kind of make their own stories for them. Their own interpretation on it and their personal feelings. I've yeah. known bands I love, like songs that I resonate with and I just love, and they're my favorite. Whenever I hear them talk about the songs, and then sometimes they'll like talk about what it is, and they'll just completely ruin it for me. You know, like. <laughs> Like, oh, like Third Eye Blind, Semi Charm Life. He's like, oh, it's about drugs. And, and I'm like, oh, damn it. You know, like I was totally connected in a different way. So it's it's cool to like see people connect in unique ways. So, so what's one of your favorite things about performing live? Performing live is a it's a it's a struggle for me. Um, our drummer will he loves performing live like that's his that's why he loves music he's like right right yeah whatever whatever record whatever let's play live <laughs> me i'm on the opposite like side where it's like i love writing i love writing lyrics i love writing melodies but when you're like all right let's perform them i'm always like oh no you know <laughs> like i have that like anxiousness that scaredness that like overthinking so, so it's always a struggle for me to play shows, to be honest. And, now, um, do you have any rituals or routines that you do before a show to kind of get in the zone? Back in the day, it used to be four shots before we played, and I'd be like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Uh, nowadays, I stay away from that. And it's almost like stay sober to experience the actual show, you know? Like, you can, you can drink and numb everything that's going on and you can get through it but what i've enjoyed lately is kind of allowing myself to experience it and, and kind of taking in people and taking in just how have the fans reacted to you going from like party <laughs> animal to a little um, i mean people that know me still don't Mortal. really get it yeah they still really don't like follow it they're like no what do we thought you're you didn't drink and i'm like no like but it's just it's such a more adulting tonight duh. Yeah. <laughs> uh sorry 
it's more of like a rewarding experience to just really be in the show and really like because you can you notice things that you never noticed before like somebody really enjoying the music and connecting with you that might not be in the front they might be you know 20 people behind but you don't notice that when you're just kind of trying to get through it and trying to dull the anxiousness like you, you gotta you gotta be in it definitely do you have any um venues or cities that you particularly love to play um we where do we play um other than red rock <laughs> yeah that's great arizona we actually played um i can't remember the venue for the life of me but arizona was so cool just just the people the vibe the the city it was just a really cool place one of my be. good friends is from arizona and he always oh, really? talks about like the music scene and just yeah, the, the music scene was just really cool like just everyone was really ex like acceptive of what we were playing and just like super supportive and like, everyone came up and talked to us like it was just really cool so uh, how can you recall any like memorable moments with fans with fans yeah i'm like fans <laughs> <laughs> um actually funny you mentioned it we had um on the andy grammar show which was two days ago we had a, a guy walk up to us and he was autistic and mm -hmm. it was birthday and he was just oh. so excited to like meet us and like he just wanted to take a picture like immediately and like was like very timid like if he could take a picture and i was like of course like get in here <laughs> so it was a really special moment because it was like he was really wanting a shirt, but he didn't want to ask, but he was kind of like, so I was like, here, take a shirt. It's your birthday, of course. Like, get oh. out of here and enjoy it. Like, and he was just so excited. And it was just like a, like a little moment that you're just like, okay, this is really cool. Like, I mean, we didn't make a dollar, but it didn't matter. It was just like, that's a really special moment that you got to remember, you know? Oh, definitely. So since you brought it up, let's talk about the show that you just had yeah how amazing is that it was really fun um i was i mean i was telling you earlier but it was a, like a severe thunderstorm delay so we sat there and we sat there and then we sat there some more and um we almost didn't play the band before us they they called it off because they're like sorry we can't really like push times you know mm -hmm. because with shows like that it's like a big city ordinance or it's like sound has to be cut by this time so it's like mm -hmm. well we can't cut andy grammar so we're cutting you you know <laughs> so uh, so we were like a little anxious that it was it was getting close to us kind of being cut but fortunately we got we got like 20 25 minutes and it was really cool because right when we started playing they opened doors so it was like people like coming in like as mm -hmm. we're playing. so it was like a cool experience to be like come on down, you know, and uh, it was fun. It was a blast. So what's your favorite song to perform off the new album? Um, probably Feel Something, um, which is the first song on the, the album because it was really natural coming together and it was just kind of, it's an easy song for me to, to sing because I'm almost just like talking the whole time. So it doesn't make me as nervous as like the songs where I, where I actually have to put in put in all the effort. Um, so yeah, feel something. So if you could play any venue or city, where would you where would it be? Um, that's that's kind of a weird question because not even a weird question, like a funny question because I don't know a ton of the venues across like the U.S. Um, Besides the big ones, like a lot of people go with whiskey to go go. <laughs> I know. I, I actually probably would say that, but then it's kind of like so predictable. And I'm like, now nah, I, <laughs> um, I don't know. As far as a state, I would love to play um, Washington or like New York. Just like three choices. But 
other than that, I don't know like specific venues. I mean, obviously you got the LA ones that you have. So if you could curate a, a show with some other artists, who would you put in your show? Do they have to be close to our genre? No. <laughs> you already kind of can guess. Third Eye Blind, I feel like they... No, I actually, we actually play with, we play with them. Um, Did you? Yeah. How we was that with, experience? We played with them in Aspen and... The experience was, I mean, it was fine, but we didn't see them. I oh. mean, they literally, they came in, like, okay. sound checked, and then drove, <laughs> drove off in their car, and then came back about 20 seconds before they played. So it's like, we didn't even get to be like, hey. And well, now you got to go to the next show and be like, I was there. Like, like, Who are you? We play with you? What? Um, I would do, like, and I don't even know the show like Tears for Fears or something from the eighties. Like, love that band. Like In Excess, I would do with like Michael Hutchins, their singer alive. Nice. Um, they're one of my my favorite bands. Modern bands like Arctic Monkeys, Cage the Elephant. Um, great bands. Yeah, that would be a great show. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to think across the board. Uh, yeah. You really pull cool. a little bit from everything, don't you? We do. I mean, like, that's why we don't really fit in a lot of genres because it's like we love so many different things. It's like nowadays that's where to be because the attention spans are like not what they used to be. They're not. Uh, it, it's yeah. good to keep pulling and like putting new stuff, waiting. For sure. A way to go. I so. Do. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened at a show other than a thunderstorm? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, craziest thing that ever happened in the show. Or even on your way to a show. I'll add that in, too. Um, I mean, I would have to, like, say, even though it wasn't this band, there wasn't, like, two of us, there was more of us. We did have a show where it was like an underground basement show. And there was this kid that was just like <clears throat> moshing, which is fine. Do whatever you want. But he was like running and hitting into like older women, like people that <laughs> obviously don't want any part of that. So our keyboard player at that time, he actually jumped in the crowd and started moshing, but obviously directed towards this kid. So mm -hmm. he he was like completely just trying to like knock this kid out and we just didn't know what to do we didn't know whether to like keep playing or like stop the show and be like hey this is not okay but I, was probably kinda, like, I would love to see how he was moshing to your music uh, exactly i know that's that i think that's why he was being kind of like a punk because it wasn't like moshable music we're like come on you're just being an a-hole man but <laughs> I can just picture it because there's always like that one <laughs> yeah. fan in the crowd that's just going like the other direction. The one, the one kid. But. but it's always entertaining. I usually at least try to catch them a little bit on my live, like when I'm at a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta give the crowd their full experience. <laughs> that's true. That's true. They, they got it that day. They got... But. So what would you say is one of the most unexpected inspirations for any of the songs that you've written? Um, unexpected inspirations. I think a lot of the younger artists coming out now, I tend to um, not really give them the time of day. Not, not in a negative way. Do we lose Alec? There she is. I'm there. <laughs> um, but one of them, uh, Benson Boone, have you guys heard of him? Mm -hmm. I've heard of him. What he's kind of music? He's kind of, he's on the pop side. He's like super poppy. Um, he's a, he's young. He's like 20. Um, but a lot of his songs are just like, they have a lot of depth to them. And it was really listening to some of his stuff come up on like my Spotify and all that. Like he's, he's a really, really cool songwriter 
and that was a that was a big inspiration for kind of a lot of the songs in the album to be honest so how do you unwind after one of your shows because you guys are very like high energy we we do um i've still yet to find a good way to unwind <laughs> um it's always hard for me it used to be drink myself to oblivion um but nowadays it's kind of i think you kind of look forward to the relaxation after a show the nothingness if, if i will just like the quiet nothingness it's it's kind of like what i what i look for after we play um which helps a lot to be honest just getting getting away from people really helps not be tempted <laughs> <laughs> so since your music has like pulls from like i kind of get pulls from the 80s the 90s like if you could time travel and go to any era of music where would you go to my initial thought is i want to go to like mid to late 90s with like the alt rock scene but I think I would have to go to like 80s, like just 85 to 89, mm -hmm. the rock, the pop, the no social media, no cell phones, nothing. Just like straight, everybody having a good time. Like <laughs> you can't beat it. Like there, we're, there's no going back too. It's not like we'll ever get there. So <sighs> I got Well, it. hopefully. I, I like to think that, like, with the clothes, it's, like, every 20 years, it kind of, like, comes back or spirals around. back, and it's, like, back in fashion. Let's just hope that the 80s are going to come back around soon. I mean, I feel I like... They, have you seen what they're doing on, like, TikTok and, like, Instagram? I think they're absolutely coming back because there's a lot of, like, 80s... Of course, somebody's just ripping it down my street. That's yeah, not so of course. It's yeah. really <laughs> um, but there's a lot of people like dressing very 80s online on TikTok. A lot of younger people, younger, a lot younger than me doing it. And they're going to dead malls and taking photos in front of like JC Penney's. And I'm like, if this revives <laughs> the mall, yeah. I would be stoked. Because I lived at the mall, and then, you oh, know, man. that's what I used to do, a little mall rat. And I was like, man, if the if the next couple generations are the one that revolve, revives the mall from, like, trying to, like, like, I don't know, do this whole, like, nostalgia thing for, like, decades that they weren't even around in, like, that'd be very cool. That'd be cool. I'll take malls any day. I, I feel I, like I, the hair's I, getting bigger, too. Like... The hair was kind of getting really yeah. flat on TikTok, it was and now amazing. everybody's rocking yeah. those like big fros and like. I love big hair. <laughs> Sometimes I I, it. one day I'm just gonna tease, like I'm just gonna literally go through and tease yeah. my whole head and just spray it. I need yeah. to find that freeze yeah. it. Remember the freeze it hairspray that like. Mm -hmm. It would say. It would say all night. I was gonna say, um, when I was in high school, everything was like I was just talking about this today because I have a lot of really embarrassing stories from like the fix fixie hipster bike uh, era. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, but I was just saying, like, thinking about the other day how everybody when i was in high school was like you have to get rid of everything and have like one like little painting on your wall and then like a succulent and like that was the aesthetic and i feel like the next i one had was rolling stones i had absolute vodka and i i even said to my mom like mm. you were a very like lenient parent because from the time i can remember i had absolute vodka ads all over my yeah. wall like i had a whole <laughs> wall That's so funny. of them from the Rolling Stone magazine, I used to like every single issue that would come out, I would like have to get my absolute ad and add it to my wall collection. That's amazing. How did your personal style and like how you grew up kind of affect the sound that you have? Um, funny enough, 
when I was younger, I was a pop punk fanatic. Uh, Were you? Found, you found Glory, Good Charlotte. Um, I can't yes, remember. Good Charlotte. See, what yeah. do you to talk about that? I can even go off the off the cuff here and say like Zebrahead. And there was like other bands. I just, I love pop punk so much. And that's like, yeah. in my earlier days, I was so like nasally with my singing because I was like, I have to be like Newfound Glory. I have to do it. Like I have to be nasally. So um, I think that's like a trend that like we kind of shook with my music writing. And now it's like coming back so hard. People oh, love- it's crazy. I didn't think of that I would see it come back like the way I, that it's I, like, like the vengeance. Yeah. I'm um, here for I, it. I'm so here for it. I'm really close to my childhood friend and friends and friend group, and I will not move away from Philadelphia and the surrounding area because I like whatever. So all my friends make fun of me and they're like, You're like a newfound glory song. Like I my friends, my hometown. <laughs> like I will like that's all I talk about. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. So my friends over you, like people are like, I've had guys be like, let's move to the other, like let's move states away, and I'm like, my friends, my yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. hey, just check out this song and you'll know. Yeah, my um, but yeah, my friends over you. Oh my god, that's that was that is a uh, bot. Yeah, honestly, the the funny thing is, like, it's not like you can really shake that. Like that was my yeah. that was my beginning stages of life like the music i love so it still comes out in the music you right now like if you if you listen you can still hear the like pop punk punk influences so under 10 that's super cool i think it is kind of cool that it's like coming back but we kind of have it in our music but yeah it is like it's a wild the way that it's coming back it's not coming back exactly the same like yeah before, it's a little... it was like um, I feel like before it was, there was like two ways you could go. You could go the all time low route or you could go like this, like, um, newfound glory, um, saves the day kind of like vibe to it. And I feel like the all time low route is sort of coming back. I feel like the, um, with the other kind of pop punk that kind of turned into like that melodic hardcore like heart have heart kind of bands and stuff like that which um yeah it's just like i feel like i don't know it's a good i like seeing it come back i really like the you're gonna need a body bag hit the lights. Yeah. Hit the yeah that was yeah. that was really like a absolute jam that was my jam yeah, that's man. why uh when like mgk came out with that like pop punk album i was kind of like i'm for it it's pretty you were like popping on it yeah, yeah. I was like, I kind of love this because it's like it was exactly like just reminiscent of all those kind of yeah, things. that's super fun. And I feel like with him in particular, like a lot of the songs I heard them the first time, and I'm like, uh, eh. and then I heard them like two more times after that, and I'm like, you know what? I do really love them. like I a, a few of them snuck up on me. Like I didn't really like them at first, and then I was I came around. I mean, yeah, they're kind of like basic, but it's one. The like, one, the worst is when you get a pop punk song like stuck in your head, and at first you're making fun of it, like the yeah, uh, the emo girl like <laughs> song. Like I was oh, like, yeah, loud yeah, and, it, and then I I started singing it. But I did that when "Call Me Maybe" came out. I'm like, "Call Me Maybe," and then next thing you know, I was like. Call me, maybe walk yeah, around. One of my good guy friends love that song, and all my DJ friends like they would literally like scowl at you if you like asked for that song. He would go into every club like, "Can you play Call Me, Lady?" I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I agree. All my friends that are DJs like shaking That's their head, like giving me an evil eye for bringing them to the club. It, uh, what's kind of funny about Call Me Maybe is it was written by Josh Ramsey. I don't know if you know who Josh Ramsey is. He's in a band called Mariana's Trench. And oh, they're like, oh, yeah. they're, really, they're like a really big pop punk band that's in huh. Canada. So it kind that's, of, uh, it's kind wait, of funny. What, what, what was the band called? They're called What's Mariana's that? Trench. They're like, they're really pop. They're awesome. They're really like pop punk and they're from Canada. Um, 
in what's funny is they come in the U S and they'll play like smaller venues of like 500 cap venues. Um, but then in Canada, they'll play like arenas and just fill it up. But wow. they're like really, like a really cool pop punk band that kind of went under the radar in the U S but he wrote call me maybe with her. So it's pretty cool. That's like a very full circle conversation. I know. Right. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like one of those fun oh. facts. <laughs> Because there is like a little pop punk tinge in that song, you know. Yeah, it's but it's, that's why, huh? No wonder it gets stuck in my head. There, oh, there you go. I literally put all those like facts into like a case, and just in case I ever have to come up with trivia questions. There you go. Like yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Who wrote "Call Me Maybe"? There you go. So we have to talk about a bear and the bull. EP. Awesome album. Tell us all about it. It just came out in April, right? <laughs> What's that? Now, it just came out in April, correct? April, yep. Seven songs. Um, so, A Bear in the Bowl, what it came from was um, electric animals. So, when we first started, we all chose an animal we wanted to be. Like, because we're like, well, why not? Electric animals, we could choose an animal we want to be, and then we could, like, for promo we could use those animals and you know it could be kind of you know endearing if you want i don't know but so i chose a bear I, love that. <laughs> I chose a bear and then will the drummer he chose um a bull so then when the whole band disintegrated and everyone quit and didn't want to do it me and him were like let's let's keep doing it it was kind of like well what's left you know the bear and the bull that's it so it was kind of like it just it just fit with the EP. It was just like me and him writing, me and him grinding, me and him doing everything, and we were just like it's it's the bear and the bull. That's that's what it is. So mm -hmm. kind of fit perfect. I kind of love that you released all together because so many bands now are like releasing one at a time, and it's like you've got yeah. We, I mean, we did a couple singles off of it. We did Dreaming, Wishing, and we did. Uh, ready to go just because the label um and us we want to do singles but it's more just about getting the whole kind of body of work out and kind of getting a getting a feel for the new band it, it's not new i mean it's still me i'm still singing so you can't but really you can it. tell like i listen to some of your older albums and you can definitely tell that it's a different phase you know what i mean like yeah, the sure. We, we were kind each, of like, with each know. album, you can almost tell like what phase you're in. <laughs> yeah, we were more like bluesy rock back in the day, and now we're kind of more like indie rock, poppy. Like, um, so we're kind of just coming into our own, I guess. It's like we're not really putting limits on it or putting boxing ourselves in to being like, we have to be this, we have to be this blues rock band, we have to do this, we have to do this. It's like Let's just do whatever we want. If people are like, they're a pop man. Be like, all right, whatever. You know? Now, fans that have followed you from the beginning, what has been their reaction to? It's kind of a split. Sound. A lot of people love it, and a lot of people are into it. We have a few people that are kind of like, nah, you guys aren't the same, you know? But <laughs> you're, all, you're always going to get that with um, no matter what you do. If you change slightly, people... Um, people can get mad about it. I always, funny enough, like, I don't love falling in reverse and Ronnie Radke, but I love following him because, like, just all the... Oh, he's the most entertaining person on the internet. Yeah, like, and he's switching genres all the time, switching everything, just, like, pissing people off. It just Yeah, just it is literally, like, the... Like, you cannot look away. It's like a car crash. No, you can't. Also, like, right. for somebody who looks like that, he acts like somebody's uncle at Christmas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but he super, looks like that, so it doesn't super matter. Inappropriate, super uncomfortable. Everyone's like, ooh. Yeah. I also, I watch wrestling, so I see his wife, like, every week up there, and she seems like a normal person, and I have to sit there and eat my little dinner every Wednesday night being like, that person has to go home to Ronald. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, speaking of wrestling, I used to love it so much. Yeah, who's your favorite wrestler? Shawn Michaels, till the day I die. Heartbreak Kid. Oh, hell yeah. 
My favorite, well, I did all, I've, I'm a little, I listen, I, I have been a little wrestled out f- because WrestleMania happened in Philadelphia and oh. I went to, uh, I think seven wrestling matches cool. in like, a, oh yeah, I went to seven wrestling matches and I have been still watching AEW every week, but, um, besides that, uh, I had, I think I've only been the one wrestling match since WrestleMania because it was crazy, but, um, I think my favorite wrestler, uh, I have a lot of them right now. I'm really big fan of MJF because he just came back. Um, I love Al Snow, the head, just head, head, head. Yeah. You watch that like biography on him or like he had it on like Netflix or something. Oh, the one where he's doing the Ohio wrestling. Yeah, um, yeah I watched all of that. It was like, re- I respect him so much as a person. Like, speaking of, like, people, like, what you're, like, not to relate this back to you, but, like, doing things just because you believe in them. Like, it, I think that's, a, like, this a, obviously you can relate that to you. You can relate that to what we do too, is you just wake up every morning and try to do the thing that you want to do and you make it happen little by little every day and seeing somebody as amazing and as successful as Al Snow just work at his dream every day with these people trying to make their dreams come true was like, just like incredible. It was crazy. It was a really cool show. It was, he's a really cool guy. And well, just, like, Jesse explained something, she makes you want to go watch it. Yeah. I hey. definitely I knew, I knew, watched it. I knew what it was called. I can't remember what it's called. But. What's um, the Wednesday night one? Oh, the Wednesday wrestling? That is AEW. Uh, like, and it's, uh, Dy- I think it's Dynamite on Wednesday. Yes, that's the one I watch. And I highly recommend it. <laughs> I like it. It's really like... It, Man, people are like, why wrestling? I'm like, I love watching big man in panties, oiled up, fighting. Like, it's, it, I don't it know really. About panties, but yeah, sure. Half of them are wearing panties and boots, dude. I mean, like, they might as well be. Yeah, you're right. I also a lot of these female wrestlers are insane and great. Like, they're amazing. I love them so much. Um, I mean, Sasha oh. Banks just came to AEW, and she's kind of like a legend, man. So, and we got Sting just retired. Sting, <laughs> Sting just retired, man. He was still he up was there doing fun. all the crazy shit. Sixty. I mean, that honestly, before music, before the mm-hmm. new power and good Charlotte, like I was like, I'm gonna be a wrestler. Like, I had- I, you know, I had a moment that I was like, I could be a heel. Or something. Yeah. I was That's like, I, to be. I didn't want to be like a good guy. I wanted to be like people. Were like, you Bruh. wanted to be the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah. You wanted the booze are like, yeah. I get it. Every boy wants to be the Undertaker. They see the man. Co- no, the man I didn't co- like the Undertaker. I wanted like Shawn Michaels. He was like, okay. Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Y'all, Shawn Michaels had the drip too. He was drippy as hell. I know. Well, yeah. <laughs> I really like it when, um, like oh god, some when some people's music plays and like the audience, like they just like practically start crying. Like uh, it's just like so good. Chris Jericho is like one that I can definitely think of. Like his own music is like what he walks out to, and he walks out to the song Judas, and like the people start like crying, like he's Jesus. He talks, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. Time that song would come on. You have to think how awesome that would be to be a wrestler and walk out to your own song. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Better than that is, um, well, that was probably the best, is uh, Rhea Ripley walked out to her favorite band. Motionless and White, right? Motionless and White played WrestleMania. And that must have been extra sweet because Motionless and White is from the area. So... They're in essentially their home city playing WrestleMania while Rhea Ripley is her favorite band walking out to her favorite band. Like that must have been, and she won. Now, did she break something and then have to forfeit her title at WrestleMania? Yes, but still, <laughs> she won. <laughs> so, you do love wrestling. I can, I can, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, like um, I just like you know I gotta love a lot of things. When I like something, I don't like it a little bit. I like it. I can't like something like 
a normal amount. You yeah, know, I'll say, if you take me to a wrestling, uh, like I got taken to a wrestling match, and then therefore I had to know everything about this thing, you know? And way. that's how I like In other words, that. she's saying that electric animals should definitely open for one of the people coming out wrestling. Oh, absolutely. You guys should definitely have walk out be with somebody walk out music. We'd have to we'd have to get a little heavier. Like I don't think anyone's gonna walk yeah. out like super like <laughs> I don't know, man. Out. I've seen <laughs> people walk out to born this way and like yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've seen all kinds of stuff. A wrestler in the wheels. Yeah. yeah. Like, it just depends who's walking out, really. Yeah, he's just like super, super sad. So yeah. as far yeah. as the future, so as far yeah. as the future for the band, what? What are we doing? Yeah. Well, we're so we got this EP out. We're trying to, um, we're keep, we're gonna keep writing. And then we're trying to kind of take the show on the road. Um, See, okay, a, a real quick, because you can explain this to me. What's the difference between an EP and an LP? Okay, so like an EP is usually, it's about like four to five songs. Okay. So it's almost like a taste of the band. Okay. And then an album is like 10 to 12 songs. Okay. So we, we got seven songs, so it's 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 verging an album. You're in the middle. The EP is more of like, okay, here's like it's an extended play. So it's like here's a here's a little taste, you know. So when bands release like three or four songs on an album, it's like it's an EP. I feel like I always say the wrong one when I'm like I, I mean, I still don't really know the difference besides the, the length. <laughs> but other than that, I'm like I could tell you, I don't know. <laughs> So, uh, what as far as you're gonna, you guys basically, it's an album a year. Um, I don't know actually. So we released this in April. I think we're gonna give it a few more months, and then we might get in the studio and start doing an album. Um, we want to kind of get on the road, play a little bit, kind of give this get a little more of a chance to to reach an audience. Um, and then now, yeah. do you know your summer, like what your like your shows that you're playing? Schedule for summer, not yeah. not really. Um, we love doing like the festival types in like the like Taste of Fort Collins that we did, um, like that kind of stuff. We love doing that. Um, so we're gonna hopefully book a couple more like that. Um, we did a couple competitions, like entered a couple competitions. One of them is if we get top 10 after that, we could play Red Rocks, which would be really cool. Um, Where do we have to go on to vote? I will tell you if we get top 10, 100%. Um, we will have to put it out on all of our pages. We yeah, got you. Please. If we get top 10 and we get a chance, that would be really cool. So, But the summer's kind of up in the air. Usually we have it more sealed in with shows and stuff, but we're kind of leaving it, leaving it open for writing and just kind of going with the flow. That's, hey, when you feel it, you feel it. And okay. like everything that you put out so far has been legit. So go Thank with you. your feelings. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if we could, if we could help you get into any shows, are there any shows that you're looking to play for summer? Or festivals or anything we'll like we love like any of the festivals usually the unfortunately they book so far in advance it's usually like what march they book for all of summer so it's like we're kind of screwed for that but um sometimes they have people drop out you, you know? never know that's the exact <laughs> thing i was gonna say sometimes people drop out and they now are you guys looking to play more around colorado no. that area or we're looking to we're done. The you. We're not done with Colorado, but I'm saying like we've done our work in Colorado and it's time to, you know, take the show on the road. So So, so there's a good chance we might get you over to the East Coast. Yeah. Anything if you guys hear of anything, if you know of anything, if you think of anything, please put our name in the hat. We love it. So definitely. We've had quite a few um people on that book for venues that own venues. I mean, 
you can definitely absolutely get your we'll name do, out. We'll play house shows. We'll do uh, hell yeah birthday parties, kids' birthday parties, whatever you want. <laughs> definitely sounds good. So, as far as a sneak peek, do you have any ideas of what the next album is going to be? Like, as far as theme wise, theme wise. We've been writing a we've been writing a lot of stuff that's super like Cure vibes, like Depeche Mode vibes. I love that. I'm a De Depeche Mode super fan. Policy Sweet. of Truth, man. That shit. Yeah. yeah. So we've been, like, not even intentionally. Like we've just been like experimenting more with like it's like darker kind of synthy. Um, and obviously, I have like a lower voice, singing voice, so mm -hmm. like directly go straight to like Depeche Mode and all that. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know if it's going to be the direction, but it's kind of, it's, it's swaying that way. So we'll see. That sounds great. And you yeah. haven't really gone in that direction. I can't think of any of your albums that. No, I mean, we've, we've, we always have like a synthy kind of keyboard. Yeah. I guess a little on the fence, but hint, yeah. Hint on our songs, but. Not a little, like not as dark as we're kind of been going. So, so we'll see if they stick. Well, I don't know. And for all of our fans, where do they go to find your music? Other than looking at all these links yeah, below, say, right there. Um, you can go anywhere. You can go. Where do you anywhere. want them to go? Most people are Spotify. So I look. I do like Spotify. I think Apple Music is just as great. But I have okay. Spotify. So mm -hmm. obviously I say Spotify. Um, go to our TikTok. We're trying to build our TikTok. Um, we're getting hounded about that. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm anti-TikTok. I'm just not good at TikTok. So as soon as you surrender. Yeah, I know, right? That's, you, that's when it'll take off. Like, I was so, like, trying so hard with my TikToks. And I'd, like, you know, like, try to get the dances. And even, like... Yeah. I mean, some of them I watch like 50 times and you should see my drafts. And it's yeah. whenever I'm like, zero fucks given, like all of a sudden, the, like, yeah. uh, just no. goes around. That's how I am. Like, I'm always like, no, I'll just do Instagram. No TikTok for me. But it's like to the point where they're like, no, you got to do TikTok. So I'm just like, okay. I feel go. like a lot of them are going to like running down the street or like jumping on a, on a truck or yeah. it's all it's always a, a, a lake short clips of nonsense is pretty much what i've gotten from it so you know what during the pandemic it was such a reason for me to do my makeup and actually yeah. like no hey like i i that's a good perspective because not live in my pajamas all day but i i get that so so follow our TikTok. See if we can see if we can do something. Definitely. Yeah, I've been working on my TikTok too. So maybe we can do some duets or something. Yeah, we can follow each other and then we'll yeah, see what happens. I'm in. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of a lot of the bands that were kind of fighting TikTok before just recently are like, you know what? Let's do this. <laughs> I think it's everybody. Uh, Everyone's it's like so, it, it moves so quickly. I mean. Yeah. You can post one thing and it can lit. I mean, a spiral. Sometimes I'm looking at them I'm like, really, like this is the one that took off. Oh, I know. Like we we did one that was the um, that was the storm for the Andy Grammer show, and it was just like showing that it was storming, and then like a picture of me, and that one like blew up hundred times more than anything we've ever posted. And I was like, what? Why? But yeah, yeah. and I'm like learning the hashtags. Like, yeah. I am getting better with my hashtags. I like add a couple here and there. The new one is blow this up. Everybody's been tagging with that one. So, Hey, I'll use it next one. That we'll one's got it. added. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and talk to us. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. We appreciate me. you. Yeah. Of course. And again, all of our listeners, Please go on their Spotify, Electric Animals, and and I just want to go over the spelling E L E K T R I C. That's it, Electric it's Animals. The cool yeah. Electric. 
it's the cool, it's the right way to spell it. So, so everybody go on, please let's help build their TikTok up and blow it up. We're gonna, start up so. <laughs> we're gonna start going crazy on TikTok. We're gonna we're gonna let it loose. And definitely when they when you find out more about the voting, definitely I make will. sure to send it to us because we will blast out on all of our pages. That would be awesome. That'd be really cool. So and again, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time thank to come you. on. Thank you so much. And I I look forward to the And please tell Will that we missed him. And yeah, next time good. we'll have to get you both on. I know he keeps texting me, like, how was it? How's it going? <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I know, I know he's missing out, so I feel bad. But well, tell him. Tell him next time we'll get both of you on. Sounds good. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye. Oh, he was so nice. Yeah, their music is so fun. And I love that they have so many. Like I was saying, each album is like a different phase in their life. And I love that. Yeah. It's I always love when a whole album, fun. like, I feel like, because I go through, like, feelings like that. Even though sometimes, mm -hmm. like, most part, I have, like, the Russian roulette of music going on yeah you really do there's I'm never just in a mood and i'm like you know what i just need to have all this vibe and they're definitely mm -hmm. the band that i find that with so everybody please go on um just so i don't say it wrong because i always like mess it up but a bear and the bull and some of my favorites are dreaming and wishing is it Monday? And I want to love you. And we got through another week of a pretty little podcast. We did. Thanks everybody for joining us. We appreciate you guys so much. Yeah, we and love you guys. See you next week. Bye.